Hi everyone! Welcome back to Studio Lou. So, I have developed some kind of a weird, like, shoulder strain. <laughs> and I think it might have been from doing too much drum carding, which is combing wool on a drum carter where you're sort of cranking the, the drum carter. Not exactly sure. So I need to just take it easy over the next couple of days and allow my shoulder to kind of settle down a bit. So, that being said, I'm still working on some things, although life is a little bit busy right now. I thought I would turn on the camera and just sort of show you what I've been working on. Um, so I often make these little traveler's notebooks and they're a great using up your scraps kind of activity and people seem to quite enjoy them so I'm almost completely out of them. So I wanted to make um, a few more so that I can um, make a bunch of ephemera and really enjoy just the process of that. So the nice thing is that what I call these ones are my flea market style, um, meaning that they have a lot of sort of random themes, a lot of images of things that you would probably find in flea markets. Um, everything from bits and bobs to, you know, art and vintage and antique and nature and you know like all sorts of things just kind of bits and bobs right but um I'll show you what I've done so far and then I'll show you how I'm getting started on these so uh, the way that I create these journals is by collaging scraps um, for the covers and I have a certain way that I create these covers using file folders and I give each one a name based on a word snippet that I find so I'll just show you kind of quickly they also have these two flaps inside as you can see I'm not done with this yet there's a few more stages that have to happen um, and these two flaps actually act as tuck pockets so they're very cute and very nice journals I have to um, I've just gotten the initial gluing, stitching, and inking done. I still have to mod podge them, and I still have to, you know, cover the the seams and everything, um, get everything all sorted out. But yeah, that's the start on them that I am going to show you. That's what they are intended to look like. So the way that I created these is first... Um, you're going to take a file folder like this, okay? And um, I believe I cut these down to nine inches. Let me just double check my my measurement. Yep, nine inches. So I'm going to make two more of these. I'm trying to make an even dozen um, of these journals. This is going to be a little bit of a long-term project, not like huge long term but it, it will take me probably several weeks to complete all of them but I'll probably complete you know as I can and then just put them in my shop so um the way that I do this let me double check which edge I left alone this one yeah I think that I just this. <laughs> I can't even remember how I folded these particular folders. That's so funny. Let me look at this. Okay. That's the natural bend, I think. And then, yeah, I kept this. Okay. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> I have to think again. Okay. So the way that I'm cutting this is actually this way. So this is the spine. So nine inches. And then you're left with this bit. And keep the tab because it gives a nice um, shape for your internal tuck that you're going to make. Okay, so now we've done that big cutting. I'll get the guillotine out of the way. now it's time to do some folding and what I do because I want these to be like even right I want the cover to be an even width um, on both sides so this side and this side um, is I take both at the same time and I kind of get a general sense of where I like the fold to be I'm not making these all exactly precise although they are turning out that way I think that you have kind of a 
a way with your own hand that you make things. You kind of eyeball it without even knowing your subconscious kind of takes over. So I just take my bone folder and really crease that down and then open it up. This one's going to go inward and then we're going to flip this one this way. So just bone fold it that way. So there we go, we have our cover. And then this one is ready for collage. Um, I do the rounding of the corners afterward. I do everything else after, after the stage of collage. So again, we'll just do this one now. Okay, so this one is folded. And again, just fold this one back. And then we've created those two extra covers that I wanted to create. So now it's collage time. So the first thing that I do is on the inside, I'm going to outline here along the side of the folder. It's going to draw this line on this side and then this line on this side. So that's gonna tell me where I need to collage and where I don't. This will be covered. So I only have to collage in the center here and then the whole outside here. So what I do is I typically start with the outside. I'm just going to kind of arrange my space a little more, a little bit more, um, What's the word I'm looking for? Like, it's like a flow, right? <laughs> We're gonna feng shui our space. So then I just go to my scrap bin and I start pulling things to collage with. Um, it doesn't have to, especially on your front cover, you're not looking necessarily for any kind of focal points. You can make small focal points. What I do is I think of it sort of like a patchwork quilt. Um, that's how I put these journals a little bit together because um, it just uh, helps me to kind of come up with what is, th these journals don't have themes, but it kind of gives me a way to create like a sort of a theme, but not really. Like if I add birds, I'll, I'll think of it more as a nature journal or whatever. Um, and then you can go over all your seams, um, your folds. I find that going across this way, like I did, with a longer piece is better than a shorter one where you would have only a little bit of paper over the fold because that's going to lift up um, and just make it overall a little harder to deal with. But it doesn't matter because we're going to be Mod Podging the entire thing anyhow. And I think I might do a few videos in this series to just show you the stages of this journal. Um, because I won't be able to do it all in one video. It's too time consuming, definitely. So I think I'll just maybe tear that edge because I don't want a hard edge. Okay. And so this is that situation that I was just telling you not to do if possible to have this teeny bit because it's going to keep, make it harder to keep it down. But it's okay because where it is, it's, it's going to get stitched anyways. I'm not too concerned. It's just it makes it a little harder to handle while you're working on the journal. You might have these little things flipping up and just generally kind of being annoying. This is a really great exercise to do with um, your scraps when you feel like they're just getting a little out of hand because it does use up a lot of scraps, which is great. I've been trying to work on things in a way that I feel like I'm, I'm kind of like sensibly processing things as I go. So if I have too much fabric, do something with fabric. If I have too many scraps of paper, you get the idea. If I have too many books, process them down. Too many book covers it's time to make um you know journals from some of those covers but this exercise i got started on it's actually not what i had planned to be working on i'm trying to just make things for shows but my shoulder decided to um not be nice to me so 
The other thing I'm doing is as I'm going through my scraps and I'm finding things like this, I'm setting them aside and thinking about how to make ephemera from them. So I've been doing that, like I found, I had this piece of paper that I cut a square out of, so I added a bird in and I stitched it around and then I made this little, um, this was from something else I was collaging and I just cut it out into a pocket shape. So I'm just keeping those things handy and I've been making all these little notebooks and things like that. And then when I talk about making things like a bit of a patchwork quilt, so here I have, you know, a little tiny focal point of Field Sparrow. So that's something that I would put on the back of the book, um, like maybe right here if I wanted, or up here possibly. These little kinds of focal points like this are, are great because they're like the patchwork quilt. So I like the boat tail grackle. I'm going to add that, I think, on the back of the journal. And the cover that we're creating, it's basically the same recipe as you would use to create a master board. Um, if you've seen any videos, I've made them. Lots of YouTubers have made them. And then I have some wallpaper here. Beautiful wallpaper that I got in Happy Mail. I'm going to put that one on the inside flap. And you don't always have to go over your seams, you can line up against them as well. And these little strips are great for going over the edge of um, a page. So this is just some cabbage dyed paper, leftover strips that I just didn't want to um, throw away without trying to use. Gluing this page to my arm. <laughs> I'll throw this whole, we'll toss this whole piece. There we go. Let me flip over. Now this isn't going to matter because it's going to be on the inside of the flap, but still it's fine. are getting ready to go to early years today to go do some playing and that will be good for them. Okay. Today's video is probably just going to be like a relaxed collage video. And then I'll continue to take you through the process I think would be nice. line that up to the edge. I typically go around and do some trimming um, afterward, just getting rid of the excess papers. It's hard to find out where I should put my glue book. <laughs> so I've got this big long there. That's better. Let's just leave it here. There's a couple more pieces of nice scrapbook paper, so I'll just set those aside and we'll decide what we can do with all this stuff. Put it over here. That's a nice one. I think I might use that in here. It's actually not too big, maybe. Hmm. Maybe right here would be nice. I know I'm going to cover up that purple that I just put there. Maybe over here too could be good. We'll cut it in half. And then with spaces like this, what I do is I just lay it down. Get all the glue down and then come to the back and then trim off the excess. I don't have to overlap and then this allows you to just go carefully around that edge where you had the file folder tab and just trim off any excess.
You don't have to worry too much if you've got little bits that aren't sticking down completely because we Mod Podge this whole thing afterward. So I don't want to cover the grackle, so this piece will go back and scrap. <laughs> This is a little bit loud. I think I'll use that for backing paper. This has just kind of been like a sorting my scraps um, adventure. Because I don't usually sort all my scraps into separate kinds of scraps. I just keep them in this one big bin and I have way too many. I sort of got started in my junk journaling adventure by creating this big basket of like magazine pages, book pages, this and that, all sorts of things. Some that probably didn't need to be saved. And then I had like some random, probably like, I don't know, thin scrapbook kind of paper that I got before I was even doing paper art. So I've just had way too much paper this whole time. So now I'm sort of challenging myself to like, get through it so I can have like normal scraps like everybody else <laughs> not like just a ton of randomness because now my scraps I think will be more focused things like you know collage fodder that I make leftover digitals and like easier to use scraps than things like um children's book pages that are like Richard Scary themed and stuff like that because I uh I now do my paper processing in a more focused way. Like I don't just create a ton of ephemera unless I know like what, what I'm doing with it. Or if it can be kind of like vanilla ephemera that can be used in different journal themes. Which I strive to do that a lot because it's really nice to have some pre-made ephemera. Hmm. Maybe this tree and you can choose to like put torn edges on everything honestly it, it doesn't really matter I'd say do what's easy because you're going to be adding like some organic stitching shaping so I wouldn't worry too much about how that is coming together have to remember that this is upside down right now so I want the tree there <clears throat> I'll go to the back and cut off this excess I stitch over all of the hard lines typically on my sewing machine um, I'll show you what I mean so for my focal point on my cover, I stitch around it and I, I, I've added random stitching. Well, I go around the whole cover, but then I add some random stitching around some of the like hard lines. So not too concerned about any hard lines that might look disjointed just as paper. Okay, so I think I can cover this spot maybe. the thinner strip here with that and this is a really good place to use like your old book pages you can make entirely neutral backgrounds at a book page as well that you can then add really nice focal points to um, you'll find that like it gives a really nice effect to have like a a very neutral background of just different types of book pages and then um your focal point gets a lot of attention but also it's nice to see things like music paper and text and illustrations in the background but all on like a, a creamy colored paper um where do i want to put that do i have anywhere yeah maybe right here i'm gonna cover up the name of the bird and I just need to cover this little spot here. Um, I think I'm going to use this owl focal point. I've got this. Um, hold on. Random. That'll be my focal point for that journal, I think. Let's 
That's a cute fish. We could put that in the inside, maybe. Because we still have to cover this. So, as you can see, I have a lot of magazine pages where I've torn out the page that had some image that I liked on it. So that's a good way. A lot of people ask me, like, where do you get, you know, your supplies? Like, where do you my thrift stores aren't any good, you know, that kind of idea. And I would encourage you to try to find things in your home if you have magazines. Um, but, you know, even if you have bad thrift stores, there's usually something. You just have to get creative. Back here, those are Ex Libris labels. What's this? This is like a, this is a coloring book page. But yeah, I, I would say like, just try to get creative and, and really um, see what you can find in, in things that you wouldn't even expect to use. Like whatever you have hanging around your house, like just like, you know, junk journals, junk mail, cover them in wrapping paper and, and whatever like you can you can honestly find a lot more than you probably realize like this is an old coloring book page that you know my kids were coloring on with markers but I think it will look really cool I'm just going to take another piece of it here and like you'll see how generic things can look like the pattern kind of think about there's this woman who I've watched a few times her videos on YouTube her name is Darlene Michaud and she does crumb quilting I mean she has I'd say kind of a personality type YouTube channel which might not be for everyone so disclaimer there she does other content she's not just a quilter um, but she is a great quilter and I think she's a um, she's a really kind of real person um, I like that about her she's kind of like doesn't hold things back I think some people know how to use their YouTube channel as a bit of therapy and I can never knock that. And anyways, what I was saying about her is she does crumb quilting out of all these little tiny pieces of fabric. And that's kind of like how I think about doing this kind of collage. You're just kind of using up the crumbs of paper that you have. So this looks like I have these two big nature scene kind of pages it was from a car ad so we have like a little owl here I think I'll cut the little owl out and then I'll be good with that and I apologize for the shine of the glare of magazine page I know it's very shiny in my light I have a little fox down here and see this is a perfect example of like finding things this is a car ad but you know I've already cut out a fox I'm now cutting out a couple ravens um, I cut out an owl so you know, up here we have a bobcat we have a bear um, but yeah that's the end of that one but what I want to use I think maybe might be these little these two little ravens that are here yeah and I'll just set the other bits over here for a moment. So these are going to be ephemera stuffed um, traveler's notebook type journals. And I'll probably use a lot of the ephemera that I make in Tuesday 10 with them because it's actually perfect because the themes are kind of random. And the ephemera that I make on Tuesday 10 I really like because it's it's from things that I specifically squirreled away and kept because I just really liked. So I like the ephemera that I'm able to create with that stuff. My apologies for little gaps here. I'm just reaching behind me to get scraps from my scrap bin. So this is a book page from like um, a textile type book, but I want this bit of blue right here. So 
like a weathered looking blue door. I think this is a cave facet um, book about like patterns and his colors and his knitting and quilting are really brilliant. Yeah, and that'll fit beautifully right there. And then go up here and trim off that excess. And then we just have this little gap down here. And I'll just take a piece of this and use it up. Right there, I think. And don't worry if when you're doing this you start to think like "Ooh, that doesn't really look right don't worry we're not done you're going to bring it all together you'll see okay so the basic collage is done now and i think we're still good for time so i can continue a little bit um i've got my focal point that i've chosen here this owl face so now i'm just going to fold this in just kind of take a final look and see if I have um, any issues of anything not covered or anything popping up kind of like that. Um, what I'm going to do with this one, I would normally just glue it down, but because it's on this seam and I don't need the little bit that's popping up, I'm just going to clip it off. Okay, so there we go. Now we find our seam again for our, our spine. Then I just go over it again one more time with the bone folder and just kind of burnish the spine down. And then I do the same around all the corners because you know you've you've trained a bunch of paper, you've glued it all down, so like just train it all down so that it flattens the whole thing. Just going to flatten your paper out and it makes everything a little more happy to be together and cohesive. There we go. And you can do that on the inside too, like just kind of run your bone folder and it will help to kind of keep everything flat get all your your glue to squish down evenly okay so now it's time to add our our focal point so for me it's going to be this barn owl um, cut it out and I suspect I'm going to need to make it a little less uh, wide so I don't want it to completely cover like that's a little too too wide so what I will do is just trim off the side and then I'll take a look at the length now um, do I feel happy with the length and then I think about the positioning so I might take a little of the black off the top I don't need quite as much. Yeah, that's better. That's what I like. You could also put a book plate down here if you'd like to. Um, I'm not going to do that because my approach is going to be more masterboard style. And I'll show that to you next. So let's just get our focal point down. Okay, so now it's time to kind of finish your collage with some bits and bobs, stickers, little bits of ephemera, things that are just going to make this look more interesting. You can, um, I usually will put things to kind of sit on top of seams um, between paper. So I usually start just with my own ephemera, my bits and bobs kind of um, that I keep in this ephemera book so let's see what would be good today so I have this little piece of um this is a sticker I believe I don't like it there but I might like it over here I think it could add interest yeah maybe on the back here so I think this is a sticker and it's just like a negative it's supposed to be a negative it is vellum and it does have a bit of a shine to it but not worried about that because I'm going to cover the whole thing again with Matte Mod Podge. So I think it's a sticker. These stickers can be so difficult to peel. 
I'm not a fan of that. Yeah, it's a sticker. Okay, there we go. I think I'll lay it this direction right there. Now, um, I think I'm going to look for postage stamps, maybe. These are fun. Maybe I'll put some postage stamps there. Then, have this little watercolor cutout picture of a cow. That's pretty cute. I'm going to put it on the inside and I think I'll put it maybe right here to just help to hold down this angry piece of paper. <laughs> just get some glue on it over here. A little cow. I want to block the face of that little fish. There we go. And just uh, smooth that down. Then what else do we have that would be nice? Maybe. Hmm. Oh, this butterfly could be nice. Maybe here on the flap. Is this a sticker? I don't think so. I think it's just paper. Yeah, it's just paper. I cut this out myself. Okay. just cover up the meeting of those three seams. It just makes everything a little more cohesive. Um, and I do add a lot to this surface. I really decorate it a lot more than you'd expect just because it, I don't know, it just um, makes everything feel more on purpose. don't want to put any stickers over the seams. That's one thing I try to avoid because they're made from a different kind of material. Yeah, that's nice there. I'm going to put this vellum sticker there. And don't worry about the white outline. We're going to do inking afterward. All these little shapes that makes it a little hard to lift. It's very easy to tear these, but even if they tear, they're actually still usually decent to use. I'm just going to lay this side down sort out all these little edges and just keep it ever so slightly attached to the panel for a moment. There we go. Just burnish it all down. No wrinkles. Okay. That's that. And I want to put something along this seam here because it looks a little bit too straight, not that. Um, I do have a lot of these like vellum flowers, but I don't think that they'll stand out enough there, especially these light yellow ones. So I'm going to put them back. Is where things get a little more complicated because you have to kind of try to find something that I can use that will work with the busyness of the inside here. I made it a little more busy than I usually do so I think I know what I can use some of anyways. Um, I have this nice strip of pink paper that might sort of 
break things up a little. Yeah, we'll add that. That's just my alarm. Okay. I also have this big couch sticker. <laughs> I need to find a way to use that sticker. I really like it. It's so fun. Hmm. Okay, still need to do a little bit on the inside here. We still need to figure this out. And again, don't worry about these little flippy bits of paper. They're not going to be a problem. Um, I might look for just another small image. Not that. Oh, that's interesting that I have this in my scrap bucket or my ephemera bucket rather okay mushrooms mm. I want to keep this building I like this building but I'm thinking I want to break up a little bit more okay I like the mushrooms down there I'll put those down there husband is making bread upstairs in the bread machine. I hear some kind of machine clattering. That and the sound of my dog snoring on the couch near me here. There we go. A little bit of flowers. Then I just need something, I think, down here to kind of break up. Maybe a lime. Let's try this one of these lime. Actually, no, no, hold on. Not a lime. Maybe a moth. Yeah, moth. I'm just torturing myself with these stickers. And you don't have to use stickers, you can use like different cutouts and things. So I think I'll call it quits for the ephemera book for now. I've got enough out of that. I try to mix up the things that I add. Um, because it's sort of like my way of using things up. Um, to just take a little from here and a little from there. I'm still just kind of on step, step one of two or three. So now I'm going into the antiquarian sticker book to just find something neat. Um, Maybe for this inside flap. Um, I already have butterflies. Maybe a floral. I like this pink flower right here. So let's bring that over here. Okay, now I'm just going to take a look at the back. I could probably add a couple more things on the back. Maybe another something from the Antiquarian book. Um, I like this bird. This blue bird right here. He could be flying down. Okay, so that's good in terms of stickers and such. Then I'm going to go to my, I keep this bin of small things like this. Um, hold on, let me just show this to you. So this is just a bit of like little small pictures, things I've cut out with um, stamps or dies, little bits of paper, 
little labels, like just different things like that. So um, that's the next thing that I, I pull from to finish things off. So I'll just set that off to the side again so I can focus again here. And I just found this one sticker that I had hanging about, so I think I will put that on the journal as well. Um, hmm. Yeah, maybe there. All right, this is the last sticker I want to peel for the whole day because I'm tired of peeling <laughs> stickers. There it goes. Okay, that wasn't so bad. All right, pop that on there. Now, now we need to find things out of my bin here. Oh, and we also need a word snippet. So I usually take a word snippet and I'll put it on top of a label doesn't necessarily have to be that way. It depends on the size, but we have to find a word snippet. So now we're on to our next big challenge here, word snippet finding. Okay, lots of flowers. That's a whole poem. That's just a little out collecting berries. Through the forest, blossoms of purest white, clearing in the woods. shut his eyes and count it to 10. I'm just going to keep going until I find something that I think fits. Season of the greatest growth. Um, lay down under a big tree to rest. As light as a spider web. 32 miles. And silver thread. I'm just going to set these down for a minute. Um, the song of a bird, fairy tulip, into the river. It's funny, I keep like pulling these out when I'm doing other ones. Break the magic spell. And I keep finding this thing about an owl. And of course, now that I have an owl, nope. Storybook. Hmm. What's this one? Quite happy. Friends with the owl. There it is. Okay. Let's put all these back. This is a good spare time thing to do, FYI. Cut out these snippets. out of books that you don't need anymore, magazines, what have you. And then just keep them all in a little magical box of things. Okay. So Friends with the Owl will fit on here. Perfect. And then I will glue that down. And that's probably my more important um, small bit that I need. Now I will look to see what else I can use here. So I've got this kind of technical drawing, this small technical drawing. I think it's too big for in there. That's too big in general. I think we just need little things for this. Maybe this. It's little stamped hand signs on some blue dyed paper, like some um, sign language. Okay. And then got to keep hunting around in this bin. It's a little ginkgo leaf. Maybe right down here somewhere. I kind of like it right there actually.
That's just stamped from one of my stamps. I'm just going to pick this up. It'll be easier to maybe find a few things. I need some little skinny bits like this, this. Hmm. I need to sort through these and shuffle them. <laughs> All right, that should give me a bit of a start. Let's see. All right, so. We'll take this little date. Put it there. You could also add um, strips of washi tape if you wanted to. Is this? Hold on paper or a sticker oh no it's paper okay <laughs> just thought it was a sticker for a moment there and this is just a little strip of text you can make these yourself I got this this is like an Etsy a digital that I got um, it's different little label strips but you could make these yourself definitely Right there. Just take little bits of book page and text and such. Yeah, I think I said that was too big. I'll put that back. Then maybe this brown ticket down here. So as you can see, like what may look a little simple, like it is quite time consuming to build your whole um your whole cover right so there's a lot to be done to make it interesting so you want layers to create something interesting and not just be like a blocky collage of scraps it needs to be a little little more than that I think I want something to kind of pop out here I'm actually going to flip it because that side's more interesting. I just want to break up the, um, the images a little bit. I don't think there's anywhere to put this unless I put it up here. Yeah, up there would be good. And it's just a little image of really old text. Right there. Okay. All right. So I'm going to call that done in terms of collaging. So now what I do, um, this is the stage where I'm going to round the corners. So I'm going to use my half inch on my um, Mayor Memory Keepers Crocodile Chomper. And I just, I separate the two covers because it's too thick to do them together, really. And I just round all the corners on the outside. So the four on the outside. <clears throat> and then to do the inside, you are gonna fold the book together. And this is where it's a little harder, a little heavier, but just hold with both hands and chop. These are good strong chompers, so you know they can really do the job for you. I don't know if those little corner chompers would really work, but you just want to do kind of a quick strong nip and it will take it all out. Okay, so this is the stage where it's time to do your inking. Um, I'm going to use walnut stain to do my inking. So then what I do is I just kind of ink the edges all the way around on both sides. I do the inside as well. So this will just take a little time here. I 
and I think that this is um, kind of necessary to get that the flea market style look that I'm going for that aged you know something you could pick up in an, in a thrift store an antique store that's been used by someone else and loved and I just flip out the edges of these your inner pockets <clears throat> And I really like walnut stain specifically for this. You could use any color, vintage photo, or you could use a color, like a actual nice color. And blue would be nice on this one maybe, or because there's a lot of blue. Okay, and then um, the inside, I do the edges of this as well. All right, and then what I'm going to do is just go around and look for places that might just look a little bit too new, too white. Like definitely this drawing, I love it. I love the brightness in it, but I'd like to just tone it down a little bit. The, um, the cutouts around any stickers that I've added, I tend to attack those with ink as well to just simmer it all down and make it a little more cohesive any children's books that have particularly bright pictures, um, these technical drawings, definitely this white scrapbook paper. Okay, and then on the front, I will add a little to the edges of the label. I will go over the text, Friends with the Owl, quite heavily. Um, on top of the vellum sticker. And then on back, I'll tone down some of the white around these birds. Definitely around the sticker. On top of the stamps. And then this crochet blueprint or whatever pattern. Um, I'll add a bit to that as well. Because we're just trying to kind of age everything evenly, right? Okay, so I'm happy with that. Now it's time for stitching. So I won't do that on camera, but I'm going to explain it to you before I go. So the first thing I do is I am going to stitch around the edge all the way around the whole thing with a zigzag stitch. Then I'm going to fold this in. I'm sorry, no, I'm not. I'm going to turn it over and I'm going to stitch down here with a zigzag stitch then I'll fold that in and the same on this side so that's all the stitching that I'm going to do on this for now when I get closer to finishing the journal after I've mod podged I'm actually going to take a long strip of fabric I'm going to run it down here all the way back up the back and it's going to cover this kind of messy scene of where things get kind of bent um, and I'm going to stitch it with um, I'm, first I'm going to glue it then I'm going to stitch it with a zigzag so you'll see how nice that all looks when it's done but let me go um, actually I, I won't I'll finish the video now and I'll just show you a finished one that I already have the other stitching I'm going to do sorry is I'm going to go around some lines so I may stitch around this then on the front, I'm going to stitch around here, around my focal point. Then on this side, I'll probably stitch around this. Like I'm just going to give a little more stitching. So I'll show you a finished one, just as an example. So see, stitched all the way around with zigzag, stitch down here, stitch down here, then did my decorative stitching in different places. So that is how you finish this start, start to the cover. Um, then the next video I'll probably be after I've done the Mod Podging. Um, yeah, so these might be spread out a little bit just because this is a time consuming process. And what I plan to work on today is actually just finishing these other three and getting them to the same state as these ones. So that is um, pretty much going to be my whole day. <laughs> You don't get to make a ton of progress, really. Like, well, I mean, I think that is a ton of progress, but it's not instant gratification, right? So <laughs> thank you for hanging out with me so much. Um, 
If you haven't yet subscribed, I would love it if you did. You can find all my social media information down below in the description box. Have a great day. Bye for now.